Your family goes missing from home. It's bad enough. But imagine how you'd feel if someone close to you went missing abroad. Our final story today looks again at the case of Stephen Cook, whose parents haven't given up hope that one day their son will come back. The island of Crete attracts over two and a half million visitors every year. 20-year-old Stephen Cook arrives here on August the 31st, 2005 with a group of friends. On their first night, they're keen to join in with the fun. There was a bar crawl that was organised that we decided, we, as it was free, we'd just jump on in. It'd be a good way to find out which were the best bars to go to in that for the rest of the holiday. We were having a really good time. Everyone was laughing and joking. Uh, really, really good night. Like thousands of other young holidaymakers, the group parties for hours. Just after midnight, I decided that I'd had enough to drink and Steve volunteered to come back with me, make sure I got back OK. On the way back to the hotel, Steve said, why well, don't have a, one more drink? We weren't far from the hotel, so we went into this bar to have one drink each. The bar was proper round to the rafters really, it was really full. So I quickly looked round to see if I could spot Steve in the bar, but I couldn't find him. Andy presumes they'll see each other back at the hotel, but the next morning, Steve isn't there. Although Steve goes missing in Crete, British police launch their own investigation. An awful lot of information surrounding Stephen's disappearance was actually UK based. Stephen was with a UK holiday company. He was with uh, a group of friends from the Sandbach area. So we were able to pull together a dossier of intelligence, which would have been a real a useful starting point for the Greek police. It's important to retrace Stephen's steps on that night. There's a witness. Stephen was last seen standing outside a particular bar looking for directions back to the hotel, which was a matter only of a few hundred yards away. This is the last time Stephen was seen that night. Nine months passed with no news. Then, in early June 2006, something happens that adds to the mystery of the case. Pat answers the phone and she gets a, a, a garbled sort of noise I can best explain. <laughs> the phone went dead. And so Pat rang 1471 and the message was different to the normal message of a phone call in the, in the UK. We traced that call to, to an exchange in, in the Dusseldorf area of Germany. Now that call could have been made by any person for any reason. It could have been somebody who was just offering a message of support. On the other hand, it could have been Stephen uh, trying to make contact with his family. And in the absence of any firm evidence, it is still something which we would like to get to the bottom of. Although the call is tracked to Germany, the telephone it's made from is not located. When traced, the details of the number are inconclusive. The Cooks' lives have been in limbo since September 2005 as they wait for news. Stephen's always there. He always will be, he'll never go away. Right now, if you were to say to me, what would you want most of all, other than him being here? And my answer to you would be, just let me know he's alive. Well, Stephen's mum and dad, Pat and Norman, are with us now. It's something simple to want, isn't it? But how difficult is it waiting, waiting for news all the time for you? It's hard, it's, it's frustrating. I mean, every day you're just waiting for news and well, up to now we've had nothing really. Mm. It doesn't get any easier as the time goes on. How have you found it dealing with both British and Greek police on this? Well, um... Dealing with the uh, British police um, has been relatively straightforward. Um, for 
from the point that um, Stephen was reported to us as, as missing, uh, which we then passed that information on to the Cheshire Police. Um, they've been most supportive. They, they came in more or less the, 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 day, the same day as it was reported that Stephen was missing. Uh, we filed a missing persons report. Um, they nominated a liaison officer for the family. Um, and from that first day right through to today, they have given us a liaison officer. They've given us support. They've given us contact numbers and have visited us on a regular basis. Okay. Um, what we're trying to do as well is, of course, it, it's a holiday place, isn't it, Crete? So yes. presumably people will be going on their holidays there. And what would your message be to people who are perhaps going on holiday to Crete, what to look out for him? Be our eyes and ears. Um, be aware of Stephen's case. Yeah. Be aware of any information you might see on TV, on the internet, on his website. Um, look at posters. Uh, yeah. If any posters are needed, we have posters. That OK, so people really can help. OK, thank you yes. very much. Good luck with that. And that's a really clear message to yes. people going on holiday there this year. Thank you both. Um, think hard. So is there anything you have seen that could help in the search for Stephen and end their wait? Here is how to get in touch. If you recognise any of the people we're trying to locate today, the number again is 0500 700 700. Our email is missing.live at bbc.co.uk. If you want to write to us as well, the postal address is missing live, P.O. Box.